Welcome to Beside the Burn for Friday the 31st of May. It's the last day of May and it's the last day of our week uh, looking at some of the myths that surround hell. Last week we were thinking about heaven and this week we have been looking at the, I suppose, very unpalatable um, thoughts of, of hell. But yet it's something that we do need to think about and something that we need to consider because if we are going to enjoy uh, the wonders of heaven then we need to remember what it is that we are trying to uh, save people from and, and point people away from. And as we finish our little series today, we come to myth number five, where somebody will say, well, you know, hell's not too bad because hell is simply giving people what they want. And the thought behind this is that people who don't want anything to do with God here on earth are going to get what they want because whenever they go to hell, they're not going to have God and they never want anything to do with him. So therefore, they'll be quite happy. But that hides a, a, a truth that we can hardly even begin to imagine that whenever someone gets to hell, they are not getting what they want whatsoever. Today we're going to make reference to one of the Puritans that we've already quoted one of the other days, uh, Thomas Goodwin. And Thomas Goodwin will give us a, a real insight into what it means to be in hell uh, and how it certainly isn't what somebody wants. But uh, this myth, hell is simply giving people what they want, it is only partly true and it's open to possible misunderstanding. In one sense, hell is an endless suffering existence whereby the wicked do not commune with God. So therefore they are separated from God. And in this sense, their life in hell mirrors their life on earth. They did not want Christ on earth and they will therefore be without him in hell. However, nobody desires to suffer at the hands of God, especially forever. Nobody wants their despair to increase as well. And as the, the creature in hell realises more and more that they are suffering forever, the despair of eternal judgment can only increase. Those in hell have no promises and therefore they have no hope but only increasing despair. So they're not getting what they want because their despair is increasing and because they have all hope taken away. Thomas Goodwin, as I mentioned, one of the Puritans, says the following. He says, and I, I know this is couched in in, in old language, it's maybe a little bit difficult to understand, uh, but Goodwin makes some, some wonderful points in this and some points that should make us seek to avoid hell at all cost and should cause us to try and persuade others to avoid hell at all cost. He says, The wretched soul in hell finds that it shall not outlive that misery, nor yet can it find one space or moment of time of freedom and intermission, having forever to do with him who is the living God. So the wicked will despair because there is no end to the wrath of the living God. Therefore, the concept of ever-increasing despair for all eternity, whereby the creature damned to hell can do nothing else but blaspheme a living eternal God, gives us all the reason in the world to persuade sinners to put their faith in the one who experienced hellish despair on the cross. True, 
Many do not want to worship the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we need to convince people that hell is not people ultimately getting what they always wanted, as if there was some sort of victory for the wicked, or possibly in an attempt to sanitize the doctrine, to somehow make it palatable um, to unbelievers. In one sense, the wicked are going to get the opposite of what they have wished for, and the opposite of what they have often experienced on earth. We all want happiness, and as such, we should all come to the fountain of blessedness, the Lord Jesus Christ, so that he can give to us all that we really desire, joy unspeakable. For those who have turned away from God to find happiness in this world, they are going to be sadly let down in the world to come. Because although they will be without God, they will know God's wrath and they will know that God is real and they will not be able to run from him because they will experience the wrath of hell. Now, that is a, a, a terrible thought for any of us and, and brings us no comfort and brings us no joy today, but it does warn us of the seriousness of what we are talking about here. Hell is a terrible place. It's not what anybody wants. And therefore, as I've said before, we should avoid it. And we should encourage others to avoid it. So at the end of this week where we have been thinking about hell, let's pray together and seek the Lord and seek his presence. Heavenly Father, as we come to the end of this week, we have been thinking each day a little bit more about hell and what is involved in hell and what it means. And Lord, this doctrine more than any other frightens us and causes us to to tremble when we think of the torment and we think of your wrath and how seriously you view sin. So Lord, we come to you at the end of this week and we ask, Lord, for your blessing. We ask, Lord, for the forgiveness of sin. And we ask for the promise of eternal life with you. And Lord, we pray that we might realise the seriousness of hell and the seriousness that it is that others are going to hell if they have not trusted in you. And Lord, no amount of arguments will ever convince us that sin and hell is a place to be enjoyed. So Lord, help us this day to trust you and to seek you and help us to know the wonderful comfort of trusting in you for eternal life. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.